Okay, in this lecture, we're going to review some of the basic concepts in stress and strain. And in particular, we're going to focus on two dimensional stress and strain. Now, in order for us to start talking about 2D stress and strain, the obvious starting point is uniaxial stress and strain or stress and strain developed along one axis. Now, this is, this is almost certainly a review for most people taking this course. So we're not going to spend too long on uniaxial stress and strain. We'll move fairly quickly onto establishing some of the core relationships for two-dimensional stress and strain. So we'll start off just making a couple of notes around uniaxial stress and strain. So as we said, this is stress developed along a single axis. And so the, to put this into some kind of context, some kind of example, the, the classic case is to think about a uniaxially loaded bar. So just a, let, let's imagine just a steel bar that is loaded at both ends. So there's a tensile force put on the bar. So consider a bar in uniaxial tension. So just, I should say at this point that when I refer to a bar, that's typically a structural element that's experiencing axial load only. Whereas if I'm referring to a beam, that member is subject to potentially axial load, but almost certainly bending and shear force as well. So we're starting off at now just considering a bar, and so it's only subject to axial load. So say consider a bar in uniaxial tension. So this is our bar. We're saying it's in tension, so we can apply a tensile force to both ends. We will say the bar has a length of L, and we'll just do a call out note here to say the bar has a cross sectional area of A. Okay, so this bar, it's in tension, and what happens when it's in tension is it gets longer by some amount, and that amount we're going to call delta L. Okay, so what we're going to do now is just state some of the common relationships that you will have come across almost certainly uh, when looking at stress and strain. So we can say that the tensile stress that develops in this bar sigma, it's usually denoted as, is equal to P over A, the force over the area. So force over area, and that is going to have usually something, a units like newtons per millimeter squared, or basically force per area. So I'm going for newtons per millimeter squared in this case. Now the corresponding strain that develops in the bar is given by the change in length over the original length, and that's going to be delta L divided by L. Now we typically denote strain with the Greek letter epsilon or epsilon. And that's going to be unitless because it's just a length divided by a length. Okay, and then the last thing that relates these two things together is Young's modulus. So we, we hopefully at this point all know that stress for a given material is equal to Young's modulus times the strain, where Young's modulus is, or the material modulus it's sometimes known as, is the constant of proportionality between stress and strain, and that obviously varies for different materials. Okay, so those are your fundamental elastic behavior relationships established. We've got the fact that the stress in, in uniaxial tension, at least, or uniaxial tension or compression, is equal to whatever the force is divided by the cross-sectional area over which that force is acting. So that's our stress sigma. We said the strain, epsilon, was the change in length that resulted from the application of that force divided by the length, and that was unitless. And then we said the thing that relates stress and strain was Young's modulus. And that's going to be a concept that's going to come back again and again in this course, this idea of a quantity that's relating stress and strain. And we'll see that as we move on through the course. So stress is equal to Young's modulus times strain, where Young's modulus is often given or denoted by the capital E. So that's all fairly straightforward. There's nothing really to write home about there. But what we want to do now is take those basic ideas and basically state the corresponding relationships for stress in a two-dimensional element. So we often refer to this as biaxial stress. So we're going to consider biaxial normal stress, and I'll unpack that a little bit now in a second. Okay, so we're going to start off by saying, let's consider a 2D element in a state of normal stress. Now we're going to just unpack a couple of terms here. We're going to say, we're going to do a call out note beside this 2D element. And we're going to say that is an infinitesimal element within a larger structure. So you can imagine 
you've got some larger structure in under some kind of loading and as a result of that loading stresses develop within the structure and what we're going to do is isolate or extract or identify an infinitesimally small element from within that structure and we're going to focus on the stresses on that small element okay so that's the first thing okay now the next term that i've dropped in here a couple of times is normal and that normal is just another word for perpendicular so what we're saying here is these are stresses that are perpendicular to the cut face and you'll see this as i as i sketch this thing out now we say that the stresses in this case are developed along two orthogonal axes so that just means two set two axes or a set of axes that are at right angles to each other so in other words in, in simplest terms an x and a y axis where the x axis and the y axis are perpendicular to one another okay so enough writing let's go and sketch this thing out now so we've got a 2d element sorry so an infinitesimal 2d element so i'm basically just going to draw a square or rectangle here to represent this element now that element is subject to biaxial stress so normal stresses are developed along two orthogonal axes so they are going to be the x and the y axis so i'm going to just define an x axis down here and at right angles to that a y axis okay now the stresses that develop we're going to sketch them on here so they're normal stresses so they're perpendicular to the cut face now the edges of this thing here are the cut face, the cut faces rather. So this here is a cut face, this is a cut face. And you can think about it, for me to extract this element from the larger structure, imagine cutting it out of the structure. And therefore the faces that we would be left with, the exposed faces on our element, would be the so-called cut faces. Now our stresses are developed perpendicular to these cut faces, so we can draw them on or sketch them on. So we're going to say sigma x x and i'll i'll explain that uh, double subscript now when we move on in a few minutes so we've got sigma x x we have sigma x x on the opposite side as well then we've got sigma y y and sigma y y in fact let me move that over sigma y y okay so what happens is this thing deforms in some way Okay, because we've got these, these stresses, which means there's forces acting on this thing. And as a result of that, it deforms in some way. So I'm going to draw on a deformed shape. It'll call it here just to say that that's the deformed shape. And this guy here was the original shape. Now, the last thing I want to denote here is a couple of lengths. So we'll say the length of this side let's just call it l1 and we'll call the length of the the new length rather l2 okay so we have everything we need here to start stating some of the core relationships for stress and strain in two dimensions so we're going to we're going to start off by stating the relationship for strain in the x direction so we said that the strain, or we will now say the strain in the x direction, epsilon xx is going to equal, we'd expect it to equal sigma xx over Young's modulus, okay? Because for, uni for the uniaxial case, we said that stress was Young's modulus times strain, and therefore the strain would be the stress divided by Young's modulus. But for 2D, for the 2D case, or stress along two axes, we have to take into account the strain in the x direction due to the stress in the y direction. And we do that using what's called Poisson's ratio. So that's that's the Greek letter nu. So it's going to be minus nu times sigma yy over Young's modulus. Okay, so a couple of call outs here. Let's first draw a box around this. This is a pretty key relationship for us. So this guy here is Poisson's ratio and it's the Greek letter nu and that is equal to the lateral strain, the ratio of the lateral strain to the axial strain. And this whole quantity here, this whole second part of this equation, it's really important that you understand conceptually what that is. That is the strain that develops in the x direction due to the stress that's applied in the y direction. 
Okay, so it's a relatively straightforward concept. We've got the corresponding relationship for strain in the y direction. Okay, so this ties together stress and strain uh, in the case of a 2D element experiencing biaxial stress. The last set of relationships that we just want to state for our 2D element are the relationships between shear stress and shear strain. So we'll set that up next. Okay, so shear stress, if normal stress was stress that's developed perpendicular or normal to the cut face, well, shear stresses are stresses that are developed parallel to the cut face. Okay, so we can sketch that out now. So we have our same 2D element and now it's subject to shear stresses and we said they were parallel to the cut face. So I can draw them on here. I typically draw these with a single sided arrow. Let me see. So that's also often denoted with the Greek letter tau. So like a T uh, and it's gonna get subscript YX. So remember I said I'd come back and explain this double subscript. Well, what that really is is that subscript is denoting that that is a stress that develops on the Y face in the X direction, okay? So the Y face is the top face here. And obviously the direction of the arrow is along the X axis. So that's how these subscripts work. So the corresponding or complementary shear stress on this vertical face would be tau on the X face in the Y direction, okay? So that's how they work. So we can draw on our shear stresses onto our 2D element. And we're not, we're not uh, digging too deep into the theory of complementary stresses. I, I literally just want to state the relationships here. So what are we going to say? That's going to be the shear stress again in the on the y face in the x direction. And this is going to be the shear stress on the x face in the y direction. And I'll just do a little call out here just for the purposes of developing a complete set of notes. That's going to be the shear stress on the x face in the y direction. And we'll just draw on our set of our set of axes here that we, that we drew on before. So that was X and that was Y. Okay, now exactly the same as we had for our normal stress case, this thing is gonna deform as well, but it's gonna deform into a different shape. So we can kind of imagine these two stresses here and here are gonna try and sort of force this, this corner up and to the right. And this stress here and this stress here are going to force this corner down and to the left, so kind of down in that direction, which is which means for that to happen, these opposite corners have to sort of push in on themselves like this. So what we end up with is a shape that's kind of like a diamondy or a lozengy sort of a shape. So I can sketch that on next. So that's the deformed shape. Now with shear stress, the shear strain is actually captured by these angles here. This guy, which we're gonna call beta one. Okay, beta subscript one. And this guy, this guy, which we're gonna call beta subscript two. And again, we're gonna go ahead and state the relevant relationships. So we've got the shear strain, epsilon, x, y. Now epsilon x, y is equal to epsilon y, x. Okay. And they are captured by angle beta one plus beta two. Now we're not going into the derivation of any of this. It's really just, this is really just about stating the relationships so that we can move on and use them a little bit later on. So that in turn is equal to the shear stress tau x, y over g, where g is the shear modulus. Okay, so let's box this thing up first of all. So that relates shear stress to shear strain, and we said we had g here, which was the shear modulus. And that's equal to the Young's modulus over two times one plus nu. So that's about it for this lecture. So we've, we've established some of the core relationships that relate stress and strain for a 2D element. And we've looked at normal stress and strain, and we've also now looked at shear stress and strain. So that's, that's where we leave it for now. In the next lecture, we wanna move on and start thinking about how strain relates to displacement in a 2D element.